Ready to go? Yep, thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you for coming out. I'm very pleased to be here at uh, South Australian Police Headquarters uh, with my South Australian colleague, Police Minister Peter Malinowskis, uh, also with uh, South Australian Acting Assistant Commissioner Thomas Osborne uh, and the Australian Federal Police's State Manager for South Australia, Peter Sorker. Outlaw motorcycle gangs and other organised crime syndicates represent an ongoing threat to Australia's security. They are evil predators that trade in the misery, particularly the misery of drugs. But we also know that they're involved in other aspects of the criminal underworld, such as prostitution, extortion, uh, gun smuggling, and they're responsible for violence within the community. We are a significant target for organised criminals in Australia, particularly because of the lucrative nature of our drugs market. Uh, we pay a lot more for drugs in Australia than equivalent markets around the world, and that in recent times has been driven by the uh, increasing demand for crystal methamphetamine or ice. Our law enforcement agencies are going as hard as they can to address this problem, and they have been heavily supported by the government. The, national organized, the, the gangs that we are talking about are national in nature. They often also have very significant international links. And it's vitally important that we take a national approach to combating them. We've been doing that at the federal level through the creation of the National Anti-Gang Squad, uh, a squad which has strike teams around the country and which feeds back into a central apparatus in Canberra, in particular the Australian Gangs Intelligence Coordination Centre, that sits within our National Criminal uh, Intelligence Agency, the Australian Crime Commission, that brings together all of the agencies with an interest in this, uh, as well as our, some non-traditional partners within the Commonwealth, such as the Department of Human Services and the Australian Taxation Office. Mm -hmm. I'm very pleased to announce today that a strike team will be created here in South Australia. Uh, we have had a liaison officer from the National Anti-Gang Squad here for some time. Uh, that has been very successful, but we'll be investing a further $3.25 million in the creation of a specialised South Australian strike team that feeds back into the National Anti-Gang Squad. Uh, the funding for this, uh, the $3.25 million, comes from proceeds of crime, which is crime that we take from criminals that they have gained from their criminal activities and at the Commonwealth level, we invest every dollar of that back into law enforcement initiatives such as this. The strike team will include two South Australian police investigators, uh, five federal police officers, uh, which is two investigators, one intelligence analyst, uh, one investigative assistant, and importantly, it will also include an officer from the Australian Taxation Office because chasing the money is always a very important part of destroying the criminal model that uh, benefits organised crime. The success of the Nant National Anti-Gang Squad to date has been very significant. Uh, we've had 1,000 offenders arrested and more than 3,000 charges have been laid. We've seized 555 illegal guns, uh, $5.5 million in cash, uh, and illegal drugs, including more than 130 kilograms of methamphetamine, um, and more, almost $10 million has been raised uh, following taxation assessments in relation to National Anti-Gang Squad activity. The National Anti-Gang Squad also liaises very heavily with our international policing network and has resulted in 25 offenders being arrested overseas with the cooperative efforts of our international partners. Members of these gangs believe that they can operate outside the law, they can't, and the government is coming for them if they think that they can. The creation of this strike team here in South Australia will bolster the efforts of the National Anti-Gang Squad. I think it's a great step forward for law and order here in this state, uh, and I'm very pleased to be joining with uh, Peter to make this announcement here in Adelaide today. And I'd like to now invite him to uh, say a few words as well. Thank you very much, Minister, and we are very grateful to have you here in Adelaide today for this very important and significant announcement when it comes to making sure that the South Australian community remains safe and continues to become safer when it comes to dealing with outlaw motorcycle gangs. Uh, this state government has a very proud track record um, when it comes to making our community safer uh, when dealing with outlaw motorcycle gangs, uh, whether it be through resourcing SAPOL in a financial sense or providing them with the legislative tools that they need to be able to crack down on these criminals. Uh, we are starting to see success here in South Australia. 
Um, already, um, only in the last six months, we have seen a in the order of a 10% reduction um, of outlaw motorcycle gang members. Um, and in many ways, that is attributable to not only the hard work of our officers within SAPOL, but legislation this government has been committed to get through to the parliament uh, to ensure that they have the legislative tools they need to take these criminals out. Um, but no efforts here in South Australia um, can be uh, successful without national cooperation. We're very grateful to this federal government and former federal governments for funding efforts, including the National Anti-Gang Squad. We're very grateful for the announcement uh, that Minister Keenan has made here today for setting up a strike team in South Australia. This will make a substantial contribution to ensuring that there is national and international collaboration when it comes to taking these criminals out of business. And we should be clear about who we're talking about and why this $3.2 million um, will go a long way. Um, these are the people that are peddling ice to our kids. They are operating prostitution rings. These are the worst of the worst and no lack of effort will be um, tolerated. We have to do everything we can at a state level, a national level and an international level to make sure that we're taking these criminals out of business. We thank the Federal Government for their announcement today and we very much look forward to working with our Federal counterparts in many years to come to ensure that we are taking these criminals out of business. Questions, yeah, well, Peter and I are very happy to take your questions. If they're operational in nature, then we'll defer to the Australian Federal Police and SAPOL who are with us as well. Is the funding set up um, matched to state to state, or is, the, is it uh, separate amounts per state for each squad? Well, we, we've invested um, $74 million in the National Anti-Gang Squad. That includes the strike teams that we have in New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, Western Australia. Uh, this investment today is a further investment, so it brings the total to $77 million. But is and this, it the same state for state? Uh, sorry? Is it the same quantity state for state, or is it varying amounts? Uh, no, look, what we do is we talk to the states about what it is that we can actually bring in terms of capability. So um, we craft the team based on what the state actually needs. So we've been talking to the South Australian Government and to SAPOL about how this is best going to work here in South Australia and the teams reflect what is the requirement of the individual state. So there's $77 million nationwide and South Australia gets 3.25? Uh, well, South Australia doesn't get 3.25. South Australia gets the benefit of all of that investment. Um, the 3.25 is an extra investment in the South Australian strike team. But what happens is that feeds back to the apparatus that we have operating in Canberra, including very importantly the hub, which is the Australian Gangs Intelligence Coordination Centre, uh, which gives us the intelligence about these gangs to help police around the country, including SAPOL, uh, to be able to bring them down. Any money that's recovered by this tax officer that will be working as part of this team, does that go back into the same project? Where does that money go? Well, we've invested a lot, actually, in confiscating assets from criminals. Uh, going after the money is vitally important because money is what drives organised crime in the first place. Um, we have a special team dedicated in Canberra that we've invested very heavily in. I invested, actually, an extra uh, $11 million from proceeds of crime in it recently uh, that has police, uh, lawyers, forensic accountants uh, working on confiscating the assets of criminals. Um, this team will be able to feed into that effort and, obviously, with uh, an ATO officer embedded in it, that will, uh, that will uh, help. But we go after that money. Uh, when we confiscate it, we then reinvest it in law enforcement. Uh, and the strike team here in South Australia is an example of that reinvestment. Uh, Minister Malinowskis, um, I think we read the paper this morning, 276 uh, patch bikers in South Australia at the moment. Is there a benchmark you hope to achieve in terms of reducing that figure? Uh, look, well, zero would be an ideal aim. Um, we are very committed to making sure that we take these outlaw motorcycle gangs out of business as best as we can. Um, but a 10% reduction is a very substantial achievement. Um, I, I'd just like to commend the efforts of um, members um, from SAPOL of the Crimes Gangs Task Force. They're doing an outstanding job under pretty difficult circumstances. Uh, but a 10% reduction in six months is a pretty good result. Um, this is undoubtedly making our communities safer and importantly it's also making communities feel safer as well. Um, but our target is zero. Um, but look, work will never stop on behalf of SAPOL until these guys are out of business. Could I just address a question to the Minister, please? Um, uh, the South Australian Police Commission reported to a parliamentary inquiry that club rooms are closing down. A lot of these people are moving on. I think it was just a turn of phrase. Uh, that's a result of local laws which have been, I understand, templated in the state. 
but is the a similar experience being caught in the state, club rooms closing down, members retiring, going to ground? Well, look, I commend the efforts of South Australia in terms of what they've done here. Uh, different states uh, have different approaches, but uh, what we seek to do as the federal government is to do all that we can to assist states that are serious about tackling organised crime, and that's what we've been doing here today. Um, these gangs um, are the public face of organised crime, so when they're patched up and when they have clubhouses that are obvious to see, it undermines people's confidence in uh, law and order within our society. Um, we will work with any state when they've got ideas to close these guys down. The NAGS is a very important part of that. Um, and where states seek to tackle organised crime, they can expect that they'll have a winning partner in the Commonwealth. And how um, valuable is the ATO's uh, contribution to your efforts? Well, it's vitally important for the reasons that I was outlining before about going after the money. And of course, the ATO can bring specific capability and specific powers as well. So embedding ATO officers in these teams is really important. It's working exceptionally well. We've taken almost $10 million um, through tax assessments that have been made in the wake of national anti-gang squad activity. Uh, and we'll continue to use the capabilities of the Australian Taxation Office to go after criminals. And do you rely upon an exchange of information uh, on a voluntary basis there, or do you just have meetings and exchange utilities that way? Clearly you've never dealt with the tax office if you think it's on a voluntary oh, okay. basis. I but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, No, it's definitely not on a voluntary basis. We'll use all the powers that the Australian Taxation Office has uh, to go after the money that criminals make from their illicit activities. Is there enough that's being done on perhaps a correction side of things? We find bikies, we lock them up and then they go to prison and they still associate with their colours because they're all kept apart from rival gangs. Is enough being done to actually stop it from, from happening again when they get out of prison? Uh, look, we don't run prisons. I wonder whether Peter is probably a better place to answer that. Sure, sure. thanks, uh, Minister. Uh, look, corrections is an incredibly difficult area of public policy more broadly. Um, on more than one occasion I've had conversations with the South Australian Chief Executive of the Correctional Services Department about the way they handle uh, bikey gang members. It's complex and it is incredibly fraught. Um, that said, the Corrections Department remains assiduous in trying to minimise the level of contact that occurs um, in between outlaw motorcycle gang members. It's something that is monitored closely and, and DCS, or the Department of Correctional Services, works closely with SAPOL when it comes to the monitoring of these outlaw motorcycle gang members while they're in custody and also post-incarceration as well. Can we ask the Assistant Commissioner a couple of questions? Um, the, new, the new legislation that's come into effect and essentially closed down those 10 cog houses across that line, is that working or is it just pushing the bikers into different... No, I, I, I think the, uh, the Serious and Organised, Organised Crime Control Act legislation actually has been very effective in South Australia. Um, as you would know, in 2015 there were amendments brought in uh, and the numbers that Minister Malinowski has mentioned, uh, that's the reduction since that came in last year. I think it was in August last year. I think it was very effective. We no, no longer have uh, OMCG members coming out onto the streets in colours and, and, and creating uh, fear in the minds of the community, which they did frequently previously. Uh, the number of uh, violent acts involving OMCG members has dropped considerably. We know we no longer, or at the moment, we're not experiencing drive-by shootings, we're not exp experiencing uh, bashings uh, in public, uh, and I think that has created a, a, a far more a safer community. So do you think you're winning the war on bike? We're, we're certainly containing them. The, the, the initiative that uh, has been mentioned today, been released today, uh, takes us to another level. We've always had the arrangements where we can work with other agencies, but this formalises that arrangement because increasingly there's an observation that OMCG members, the senior members of those gangs, will have a presence in, in across the country as well as overseas, and this legislation enables us to, to tackle that. Um, in the, one of the media releases, it, talk, it talks about how some bikes are arrested internationally. Um, is that something you see happening with um, you know, bikes that may have committed crimes in South Australia? Uh, well, certainly through the AFP overseas liaison officers and, and their officers around the, around the, the, the world, uh, we've got an increasingly uh, 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 awareness of bikey movements around around the world. They certainly move. They move across the, the country and they move outside the country. Uh, and as, as, the, uh, as the minister mentioned, uh, drug importation and the, and the dealing of uh, methamphetamine in this country is, is largely controlled by or involves OMCG members, and a lot of that comes from overseas. Would you, South Australian police, be monitoring people overseas as we speak? Uh, we certainly. Uh, 
through the national intelligence uh, operations, uh, we, we, we are aware of the movement of, of most of the people. Any final questions? Sorry, can I just get you on another topic? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, can I, can I, can I, questions for you too? Oh, sure. Can I, can I just add that one point about international cooperation? It is the nature of these gangs that they are, are national, but they also have very significant international links, and that international component is vitally important. And uh, we have reinvested proceeds of crime in enhancing the Crime Commission's posts overseas. We've been sending people to Hong Kong, the United Arab Emirates. We've embedded people with the FBI, with the Drug Enforcement Administration in the United Kingdom, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Uh, the AFP already has a very extensive international network of almost 80 officers overseas. And those efforts, and vitally importantly, we're the only country in the world that has a joint task force with the Chinese Narcotics Control Bureau based in Guangzhou. Um, officers from that bureau with the Australian Federal Police are working side by side in a task force called Task Force Blaze, which is specifically targeted at stopping the import of uh, crystalline methamphetamine into Australia because China is one of the main sources of supply. Sorry, you had some network questions? Or Okay, uh, just on another topic, Mr. Uh, will the federal government be increasing the tobacco excise in the federal budget? Um, look, I wonder if, if, if we're going to move off this topic, it probably isn't fair to keep the police and maybe keep Peter here if it's going to be a political discussion. But, uh, Any questions on the topic? Yeah. Can you tell us who the two detectives are that are forming part of this task force and where they've come from? In, in terms of their names? Or... Well, South, Australia, <laughs> South Australia, the Crime Games Task Force. From a, sorry, from a federal police perspective, we already have a um, sergeant as a liaison officer with the NAGS. Um, you will be staying in that position and you'll be recruiting two more team members, plus an intelligence analyst and an uh, executive assistant as well. Any final questions on the topic, please?